Here are six steps to building an intranet in Google Workspace your employees will love. Okay, so your business is scaling up, you're maybe entering the growth phase, or maybe you're a startup and you just want to get things right as you're onboarding new team members and contractors, it's time to build an intranet. Now, what is an intranet for? Well, this is the place where you store your systems, processes, policies, for how the business runs, and so you can ideally start to have it run without you. Now, the internet is your internal library for knowledge, for your intellectual property, and for how you want to build the business. And it's the best resource for training team members in your business because it means that when someone new joins the company, you can give them access to your internet, and that's where they're going to go to learn how things are done. That's where you're going to store things like your values, your mission, your vision, where you're going to store how someone gets onboarded into the company. And it's how you're also going to share how the different areas of your business operate. So if you want to hire someone who's maybe, you know, offshore or working remotely, they'll have a guide for how you want things done. If you've got someone that you want to train, it means that you don't have to retrain every single person that joins your business by hand. Once you start documenting systems, you can very easily start delegating. And delegation is the magic way for you to grow and scale your business so that you can one day, hopefully, exit the operations and let the business run without you. So step number one is to plan. And that's where we wanna basically decide, okay, what is this gonna be for? Now, a general small business intranet is probably gonna be just one file where everyone in the business can access. You may choose if you're like a franchise and you have franchisees, or maybe you have a lot of contractors that you don't wanna expose everything in the business to. You may choose to have a second internet for that specific purpose if possible, if that's needed. But for most customers that we work with, they will just have one intranet and that one intranet is accessible to everyone in the business. Now, why would I share with everyone in the business? Well, because number one, I want the team to feel like they have the opportunity to collaborate and actually contribute and edit how things are done inside the business. And we have a process for bringing everyone together to contribute to building the internet when we first started it. Secondly, I want the opportunity for the team to be able to move between different roles. And I don't want to have to complicate things by creating lots and lots of different internets. So my recommendation is one internet for everyone in the business. Step number two is to prepare. So you might set out a project plan or a quarterly goal for you and your team to actually work on building the internet. Ideally, you're going to designate like a project manager or someone who's going to be managing the project. Hopefully that's not you. But if it is you, that's okay as well. And effectively, you're going to look at, all right, well, you know, what are some of the key processes that we should be systemizing in the business? Now, you may have heard me mention some of these on the channel before. What are your jump shots and what are your bottlenecks? Your jump shots are your absolute most important processes that you must nail every single time. And your bottlenecks are anything that's not systemized or not documented right now that's holding you back from scale or holding you back from reaching your goals. They are the first systems that you want to document because you know, you're going to be tempted to document every single thing in the business. But my recommendation is use the 80-20 rule and either work on the things that you want to have done perfectly in the business and maybe they're not being done perfectly right now, but also the things that holding you back from reaching your goals. They're the best place to start. So number three is the setup. Here's where we get technical. You head into Google Drive, create a new document. You need to go to the more menu and then start a Google site. Now this works for free on a Gmail account if you're using it there, but our recommendation is obviously to use a Google Workspace business account and you can give your internet a name and from there add some basic branding, maybe a logo, and then start to set up your page structure. Now, my recommendation is that you have a getting started section because that's the area where you will send your newbies and you wanna have all of your newbie resources there. And then each area of the business should also have its own section. So for sales, for finance, for your delivery or of your projects or your manufacturing of you know whatever your widgets are for your business, each one of these should ideally have a section so you can keep things nice and organized. And it's easy for your team to browse through and find their way through what they need. Step number four is security and permissions. And this is a very critical step because by default, Google will sometimes expose your Google site to the world. That's because you can use Google sites to create a website that will be publicly available on the web. But we don't want that for our intranet because we don't want our business information being leaked to the world or being indexed by Google search. So check your permissions and make sure when you're publishing the site, and when you're setting that up, it's locked down to only people inside your company. Now, my recommendation is to actually use group-based permissions inside your Google admin panel. With those group-based permissions, rather than having to add staff manually every time someone new joins your company, you can just invite a security group of staff. And then when you have a new staff member join, all you need to do is create their user in the admin panel of Google Workspace and then add that user to the corresponding group. And once they've been added to the corresponding security group, if that group has access to the Google site, 
they'll automatically get access to the resources that they need. Remember, there's a difference between publishers or collaborators and viewers as well. Publishers are those who have access to edit the site. And my recommendation is if you're a small business and you've got less than 10 employees, well, probably just leave this open to everyone because you want everyone's contribution to help building the internet. But over time, as the business grows, you may decide to lock this down to just a group with managers where it's just the managers who can actually make the changes to the processes, but still have the whole team contributing to those processes. But the viewers well, obviously you wanna share that with everyone inside the company. And so when you're selecting who can view the site or who can access the site, that's when you'll use a group for security based on every single person in the business and they are all automatically added to the site. Now, if you've got people outside your company that need to access this, you may choose to create a security group called contractors and add their Gmail accounts to the contractors group. Fortunately, it is Gmail or Google-based accounts only. You can't use a Hotmail account or something that's outside the Google ecosystem. But what that will allow you to do using a security group with Google accounts is share that to the site securely, again, without having to remember to add individual email accounts every time you wanna add somebody new to the site. Okay, step five is to actually create content on the site. And my favorite way to do this rather than doing it all yourself as a business owner is to actually engage your team to help you do that as well. So what I mean by that is have your team write processes and as they write processes, they can actually put them into the intranet and then you can review them as a team. Now, my favorite thing to do is once a week when we have our team meeting, ask the team to document one process per week and bring each one of those into the meeting. It means that you're not stuck doing all of this documentation as a business owner, probably not your genius zone. And it also means that all of the team will feel like they've had a contributing hand into actually systemizing the business. And they're more likely to use this as a resource if they have help build it themselves. Now, one of the things I love about Google Sites, instead of just using Google Drive to store documents and training videos and those kind of things, is you can embed rich media into your site. So not only will it give you the space to have text-based instructions and lists and information, what it will also let you do is add videos or embed documents or even spreadsheets. And those rich features inside Google Sites mean that you can have a living breathing online digital operations manual, which basically helps you to connect to where you've got everything documented in Drive. Now, remember that Google Drive is kind of like your filing cabinet, right? That's where you put all of the working files for your business. And that's where all the stuff goes for the projects that you're delivering, for the campaigns that you're running, or for the customers that you're looking after. Google Sites is your library. That's your index of where are all the important information on how to do things inside our business and how can we lay that out in a neat way so that if someone was to join our business, they know exactly where to find out how to do their job. Step six is the launch. That's when we get the team on board. We let them know, hey, our internet is ready to go. This is now gonna be the Bible. And if you're a business owner rolling this out or a manager, my number one tip for you is when you put this resource in the hands of your team, anytime somebody asks you a question or asks for help with something, that you know has already been documented, instead of answering the question for them, you can actually let them know to go and check it out in your intranet. Now we call ours the genius net, and I just say to staff, hey, you know what? That's already recorded in the genius net. You can go ahead and check that out if you like. And what that does is it trains your team to actually search your intranet before they come to you for questions. So if you're a small business owner and you're just getting started with systemization, well, this is a great way to have the team do things for you and to get tasks off your plate. Remember that anything that you can systemize, you no longer have to do. Any system that repeats, you probably wanna have documented in a process somewhere so that you can have other staff take care of it for you. And what that means is that you are freed up to work on more high value tasks and to let others take care of the things that you don't wanna take care of meaning you get to keep focusing on growing the business. Thanks for watching. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. It's great to have you here. We have plenty more videos on the channel on systemization and using technology in your business to grow and scale your business to a more successful organization. If you'd like to learn more, please check out any of the playlists on the channel around systemization and make sure you check out our growth roadmap, which takes you through the different stages of growth for scaling your business.